Colorado's district attorneys are pushing for a small change at a criminal justice statute that could make a big difference in their ability to hold violent offenders accountable. Political specialist Sean Boyd explains. At issue is what qualifies as serious bodily injury. If you stab someone in the neck and miss major arteries, is it serious bodily injury? That very question went before the state's Supreme Court, and the decision in that case has now prompted legislation. The case involved a defendant named Delbert Ray Vigil. According to witnesses, Vigil got in an argument with a homeless man in 2019, threatened to kill him, and then stabbed him in the neck. He was initially charged with first-degree assault causing serious bodily injury. 18th Judicial District Attorney John Kellner's office prosecuted the case. What we had contended, what the trial court agreed with, was it was the risk of serious bodily injury. It was the risk that was associated that they almost died. But V. Hill appealed the decision, and the case went all the way to the state Supreme Court, which had a different take. It said because the knife missed a major artery and the victim survived, it wasn't serious bodily injury. The confusion around the serious bodily injury statute right now is that it really looks at the actual outcome of, let's say, the stabbing or the shooting, rather than the risk of danger to the life of another person. We want to make sure it's understood that if somebody, for instance, stabs another person in the neck and thankfully, by the grace of God, doesn't hit you know, some vital organ, uh, doesn't kill them, that that's still prosecuted as serious bodily injury. Kellner is pushing for a bill that would clearly define serious bodily injury in state statute. Across our state as we're dealing with violent crime, trying to find ways to address this, we need clarity in our statutes to help ensure that prosecutors, like the folks in my office, like the prosecutors across the state, can hold these violent offenders fully accountable. In V. Hill's case, the Supreme Court's ruling resulted in prosecutors pleading the case down to second-degree assault, which resulted in community corrections instead of prison. Right now, this confusion only benefits criminal defendants charged with violent crime. Kellner says the clarification in statute is especially important in light of crime statistics showing non-fatal shootings are on the rise. He says just because someone is a bad shot, he or she shouldn't get off with a lighter sentence. The bill passed the Senate, but still needs approval in the House. At the Capitol, Sean Boyd covering Colorado First.